Hello, it's Dr. Elizabeth Alter. Today I'd like to talk to you about ferritin. Do you know your ferritin level? Well, this video is specifically for ferritin in women. I will have one on men um, soon. So ferritin is a blood test and some doctors, especially conventional doctors, will not routinely check you check your ferritin levels. So in functional medicine, uh, we do this regularly. So on all my patients, I will do ferritin levels. And uh, lately, I've been seeing this issue of low ferritin uh, more and more and actually more difficult to correct. So as soon as a woman gets to the age of menstruation, she's losing blood every month. By and large, women usually are not um, big consumers of iron. So it's, it's an issue where you're losing blood and not replacing it. And by the time most women get to a doctor and have a ferritin checked, it's usually been years of having this problem. So my advice is for any parents out there that have um, young girls that are starting their, their menstruation is to think about giving them some iron during the days of the month that they're bleeding. And it's very important that you pick the, cur the right iron. Uh, so most over-the-counter iron excuse me, is in the form of an iron salt. So the best type of iron is chelated iron. And what that means is that the iron is attached to an amino acid for better absorption. So the, the iron that I usually recommend is um, our iron in X. So iron in X is a chelated iron. And it's... Uh, it's important that you do this under, under the supervision of a doctor, so um, preferably a functional medicine doctor. I'm sure some conventional doctors will check ferritin, but again, we were taught in medical school that ferritin was part of the workup for anemia. So it's not usually part of your basic blood test. So uh, for years I've been, I've been checking patient's ferritin, and I find that most women have this number low. And the only time that they, they start having somewhat of a normal ferritin is after menopause. So for obvious reasons, since they're not bloodletting on a regular basis. So what's, what's so important about ferritin? So when ferritin is below 30 or 40, you, you start experiencing hair loss, uh, fatigue, sometimes palpitations, which is feeling your heartbeat or being aware of your heartbeat, uh, thyroid and adrenal problems. So even if your thyroid and your adrenals are good on paper, if your ferritin is low, then you, your, your thyroid and adrenals may not be functioning to, uh, to their optimal levels. So ferritin is, is important to, to check it at least once a year. And usually if, you're, if my patients are low, I'll give them about three or four months uh, to make changes. So other than the, the iron that I just showed you, the, the iron and X, I also recommend that they have iron-rich foods and that they take vitamin C. Vitamin C pulls in your, your iron better. So we absorb iron better with vitamin C around. And so sometimes I'll suggest they take the iron, have iron-rich foods, and maybe get intravenous uh, vitamin C. So if they come in for a drip, they get their vitamin C and then I have them have a lot of um, iron that week to get the ferritin higher. 
There are other options. Um, there is intravenous um, iron. And just be careful where you go for this. Um, there, there can be some bad uh, reactions to, to iron, so you have to go to a place um, that is prepared to deal uh, with that. And um, I've offered it to my patients and it, it's, uh, it's gone well. And, uh, and they respond well. Their, their ferritin goes up nicely. So these are some things to consider uh, in terms of ferritin. And again, if you're um, a woman of menstruating age, I highly suggest you get this test done on a regular basis. And I think uh, your health will be better for it. Well, thank you and have a healthy day.